Victor Wembanyama has been the talk of basketball for the past few months. Leading up to the 2023 NBA Draft, the French sensation was hailed as one of the best prospects ever, and now he's out to prove it. With each game, Wembanyama continues to improve, and he's having an outstanding rookie season. Players, coaches, fans, and analysts can't stop talking about him. Let's hear what some of the NBA's greats from the past had to say about Victor. Carmelo Anthony is widely regarded as one of the most talented basketball players in the game's history. Back in the 2003-2000 2004 NBA season, he was locked in a close race with LeBron James for the Rookie of the Year award. Similar to the competition between Victor Wembanyama and Chet Holmgren in the 2023-24 season. With his wealth of experience, Melo understands what it takes to achieve greatness. On his podcast, he shared some words of advice for Wemby. In one episode, alongside Bomani Jones, they playfully teased the Spurs for not passing the ball to Wemby. He also a rookie though. He's also, he got, he got to really like work his way. Like you got niggas on their team that's making, niggas just sign for 400 million. <laughs> but that's why Pop though. The pop ball. like, yo, listen. Pop is on some We're not going to play through you. We're not yeah. going to play, you know what I'm saying? We're going to play around you because I know your skill set. I know you don't need the ball to be effective. Pop play though. Pop put you in those positions. Local. I'm not saying that I agree with what's happening. Yeah, but you, I, I, I but you comprehend get it. what's but happening. But you get it, yeah. I, I want to see him go to work. Go go down there, get it. Wherever you want to go, here. But I'm throwing it to you. Wimby, you got to take your time. You, we all got to go through it in sports. Oh yeah, as an athlete, you have, no matter how good you are, Is you have changing? to go through it. However, as the conversation continued to develop, Melo shared his advice for the young Spurs big man. Wimby, he has that in him. Like, I, I want to I wanna wanna beat, yeah, I want to beat this, but he's also a certain type of player mentally, like his mentality. He comes from playing the right way. He comes from France where they play the right, run plays. Mm -hmm. They That's why Pop put that play in order from three, four years ago, <laughs> right? So if you get somebody like DJ who comes back to that and know how know that system already, and Wimby don't have to, he not gonna be mad that DJ, the ball is in DJ hands. Right, right. He's like, right? yeah, because he around. understands that. So I'm not mad at him going back to San Antonio, but I also know what he's thinking as far as, I, it's, it's time for me to make that decision. My okay. next decision is gonna be my, my best decision. Richard Jefferson is often overlooked in NBA history. Despite being one of its most underrated players, despite never making an all-star appearance, RJ had a remarkable 17-season career in the NBA. Even as his athleticism waned in his later years, he remained a valuable asset on the court due to his basketball IQ. It's this knowledge of the game that has made him a popular analyst today. Leading up to the 2023 NBA draft, Richard Jefferson was a vocal supporter and believer in Wemby. In fact, he went as far as to say that he would pick Victor ahead of LeBron James if they were in the same draft class. This to me is the most important part of his game. The fact that he can post up. Again, he's got the footwork. Those size 20s are working right now. Here, look, he's working, he's bouncing. Step back. He's got a step back jumper already at 7'4". A step back jumper is next level. Now again, here, out here in space. Look, working, taking the time. He's handling contact. When he elevates, yeah. there's no one there. That basically means he's shooting in a gym by himself. And when you can do that, players' accuracy goes up. But this is the one thing I want to say. Zachary said that he is the best prospect we've seen since LeBron James. If LeBron James, at that exact moment, showed up, Victor would go higher than him. LeBron James and all the things that we saw, and I'm not saying that he's going to be better than LeBron James. What I am saying is right now, I remember LeBron James 20 years ago. That player was six foot seven. This person is seven four. LeBron James would be number two if he was the exact same age coming in the exact same draft. LeBron James would be number two. That's how crazy this kid is as a prospect. Jalen Rose, often considered as Richard Jefferson's rival for the title of best player to never make an all-star game, won the Most Improved Player Award in the 1999-2000 season. He has since transitioned into an NBA analyst and, like Richard Jefferson, is a big supporter of Victor Wembanyama. Jalen has nicknamed him Blank Check for a specific reason. Let's hear why. Well, I appreciate his maturity. We got a chance to watch the interview he did when he sat down with our game crew. And shout out to Jeff Van Gundy. I appreciate the love of my brother and Mark Jackson. But that age, that maturity off the floor, Cassidy, you can tell clearly translate to a player that wears a size 20 and a half shoe. And with a long name like that, everybody's gonna try to come up with a nickname for him, right? And one of my favorite Hall of Fame players is Kevin Garnett. His nickname was the Big Ticket. Until somebody come up with a nickname for him, 
I'm gonna just call him blank check. That's what he represents to me. He already sit in front row, deservedly so, wearing his Buffaloes. We talking about him. Adam Silver's talking about him. LeBron called him an alien. Mm -hmm. KD's talking about how he's gonna change the league. Teams are tanking for him right now. <laughs> and so let me just also point this out. The teams that are tanking, and Wolves was just talking to me about this, 14% chance to get number one. But you got a 27% chance to get one or two. So of course, Victor deserves to be the headline, but the story might be Scoop Henderson, who's gonna go number two. J.J. Redick, another player who never received an all-star nod, has found success as a basketball analyst. Regarded by many as a good analyst in the NBA world, Redick has found himself torn between Chet Holmgren and Victor Wembanyama for the 2023-24 Rookie of the Year title. I'll be honest with you. Steve Jones, Nikias Duncan from the Dunker Spot, we all caught a lot of backlash from uh, San Antonio Spurs <laughs> Twitter. Our pick at the time, and again, this is the thing, we are... Uh, Explicitly stating, at the time, at this time, I give a slight edge to Joel Embiid for MVP. At the time we recorded a few weeks ago, I gave the slight edge to Chet. Wemby's play, particularly over the last six weeks since he moved to center full time, uh, has been spectacular. And we can recognize that San Antonio as a team is pretty much a mess. We can recognize the pieces around him aren't gonna necessarily lead to a, a play-in or playoff spot, but what he's doing is remarkable. Right now, I feel like this is neck and neck. Kenny Smith, the final player on this list without any all-star appearances, is eagerly anticipating Victor's growth into the potential face of the league. He believes that Wembenyama not only possesses the talent, but also carries the expectations to achieve this once the reign of the older players comes to an end. Well, Giannis will take over the uh, Jokic will take over a, a portion of it because they're still overlapping LeBron. But, you know, the, the, the new guys here, you know, he's in San Antonio. That's the expectation. Like, he's going to be the face of the league in five years when there's no LeBron James and Anthony Davis is in the tail end of his career. And, you know, all of these guys are ended. I think Wimbayama is a unique player. And if he continues to mature on, what it, on the skill sets that he already has, He'll be the guy. After retiring from his playing career, NBA legend Kevin Garnett found himself on various podcasts discussing all things NBA. Whether making guest appearances or hosting his own show, KG Certified, the big ticket never fails to entertain. Listen to KG tell stories and share his thoughts on who Victor Wembanyama reminds him of. You remember when Yao Ming played uh, his first game against Sean Bradley? Yo, you remember this? I know you remember this. Okay. And Sean Bradley was beastly, beat his shit up. I think he pushed him down one time. No, no, no shit, don't look this up, real shit. Look, I think he pushed him down, I think Yao fell. Sean Bradley? Listen, Sean Bradley, bro, they played a back-to-back -back game. I'll never forget this. The next, I was like, damn, he, he, he kind of beat. I said it, he beast, damn, he beast big fella, damn, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 Lord, the very next night, matter of fact, at the end of that first game, I think it was in Dallas, Steve Francis went over and grabbed Yao's head, and they're like, they're like, head, they're like forehead to forehead, and you can see Steve Francis' hand, and he's animated. Man, I don't know what Jeff Van Gundy, I don't know what Steve Francis, I don't know what Cat Moe, I don't know what they did to big fella, but the very next night, and y'all mean destroy Sean Brown. I'm talking about banging him, bang. Y'all ain't want him scared yet. And y'all mean play like that forever. Damn. That's what Wimby looks like to me. He came in, you know, like Bambi, you know, fragile legs, you know. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? It was a bunch of fog. He had, you know, dipped his head through the fog. Bro, I saw it. You saw it? I saw the alien. I saw the, uh, I saw it. Gilbert Arenas has been known for his controversial opinions about European NBA players. However, he has expressed admiration for Victor Wembanyama and hopes to see him succeed. In order to achieve this, Agent Zero believes Victor needs to address his flaws, and he has identified what he thinks is Victor's biggest flaw. You know what's crazy, though? As a defensive, as somebody who, who possibly might win the defense player of the year, low-key, everybody's hit their career eye on him. Everybody's hit their career high on him. Mm -hmm. As a one-on-one -on -one defender, he yeah. still needs help, sure. right? He still needs help as a one-on-one -on -one defender. Right now, most, most defensive players, they are help defenders. Mm -hmm. But I don't think people actually understand that. Yep. Like, Rudy Gobert is a great help defender. He understands how to protect the paint. Same thing as Winby. Uh, same thing as... Serge Ibaka was that Serge way. Ibaka, yeah. Uh, ben Wallace was yeah. that. Yeah. On the ball, when someone's backing you down and sitting there putting you under the rim and stuff, 
your defense usually is questionable. When a great young prospect shows up on the biggest stage, it is very common for them to get compared to other players that they share some similarities with. As Victor is truly a unicorn, there is not really one player in particular that you can compare him to. However, Shaq tried and gave us a very interesting comparison, to say the least. Well, a few things he's gonna have to learn. He's gonna have to learn that with him being the new kid on the block and everybody's coming at his head, He's going to have to be a, a little bit aggressive. They're going to try to use physicality right here. Don't ever in your life let a little man put you out and then you come up and take this shot and then you flimsy flamsy go to the hole. No, flimsy, you got to be strong. And right here, don't let another skinny guy push you. You got to be physical. Like if they're going to be physical with you, you have to return the physicality right here. You run. Now look, when you run, you stop in the middle of the floor. Stop right there. Don't, but no, he decides to come out. And right here, forget that little double team. Just turn around like my good guy Bobo Bo would do and shoot over the top. And then I want to go at Reggie a little bit. He talks about he's never seen a guy like uh, Wimby on it. Yes, you have. His name is Bobo. Bo. You think Wimby Bobo? Bo? Oh, whoa, whoa, let me, whoa, whoa, let me finish, let, let, let me, let me finish my point. Is they both black or something? No, no, no let me finish my point. Wimby on is just way more consistent than Bobo. Bo, but Bobo Bo is okay. the first I, I seven agree. Four oh, first of all, that we see with him. I agree. Yes, first of all, that's no. This is I agree. Bo, Bo. That's not Wimbyana true. is way, 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 way more consistent than, than Bobo. Bobo is the first seven foot four guy that we've seen come out with yeah. the handle and shoot the threes. Yes. Y'all acting like y'all act like y'all like ain't never seen a guy like that before. Bobo's the first guy. That's yeah, all first I'm saying. I'm, I'm standing on what I'm saying. And okay, Kenny, well you stand and Kenny and Ernie agrees with me. No, Bobo I agree is the first guy. The lack of Bobo just don't play hard. That's all. Yeah. Bobo's the first big guy with that seven four with handles that can shoot the three passing ability. Y'all act like y'all ain't never well, seen Well no I didn't say like no no I didn't say four. No, I said I said Ralph Sampson. Seven four. I said Sampson didn't dribble like this the, kid. If Chuck did not agree with this comparison that Shaq gave us whatsoever. However, he did agree with the introduction Shaq made about Wemby not being aggressive enough. Let me just say something. I will say, Shaq, I did like his pitch because there's two problems I had with him in the first half. Number one, he's really lackadaisical. You see those little passes, they might work over in the French League. They're not going to work in the United States because the guys are too good. You got to quit. You got to be aggressive when you make pass out of double team. And Shaq had a great point. I mean, another point, ball? That, that po other point about Bo Ball, I don't agree with that at all. When they had Eric Garden on him, he didn't, like, just go in the lane and just, you 7-4, seven, 7-5, seven, just stand there. You can't let Eric Gordon, because they ran a play and took him back out to the three-point line. You cannot let little guys guard you. Chuck is usually pretty rational with his takes and does not buy the hype. That was the case when Wemby was the big talk of the league before playing in his first NBA game. And Chuck pointed out that he needs to see him play first in order to buy it. I'm very yeah. excited to see him play, but like I say, I, I, we don't know these guys until they start playing against other NBA players. Pretty sure there was no Joker in the summer league. Uh, seriously, no yeah. LeBron, no Anthony Davis, and I'm not, you know, there was no Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and trust me, he's a center. Pretty sure there was no Joel Embiid over there either. <laughs> In France either, so I'm looking forward to watching him play. It'd be great if he's great, but like I say, man, you gotta wait and see. It did not take long for Wembenyama to make Paul Pierce a fan of his. After an impressive debut game for Victor, Paul Pierce was left impressed and had some words of praise for Victor. Well, first of all, everybody knows there's a difference from preseason to yes. regular season. You know, minutes from the starters go up and you match up with the guys who are the stars who will be on the court for 30 plus minutes. I was thoroughly impressed for the minutes that he gave me. Hmm. You know, overall, at the beginning, I was like, oh, he's going through some growing pains, uh, foul trouble. He has to get used to the to the NBA referee and the physicality. But then he had like a Zion like debut in the fourth quarter. Remember when Zion came in, it was like, yep. uh, he was coasting through the first three quarters and fourth quarter. It looked like he was about to will his team to victory. Mm -hmm. I mean, he came in, knocked down some threes, blocked some shots. And in the defensive side of the ball, that's where I was thoroughly impressed. Look at this, he blocks Kyrie's shot from, from the wing and, and, and then he makes threes effortlessly. I mean, this guy, in my opinion, he could be the rookie of the year and defensive player year all in the same year. He has that type of potential because when I watched him, you cannot score on this guy one-on-one. -on -one. He can guard one through five posi positions. We watched him guard Kyrie right here. He's not gonna drive him. He's just gonna go to a step to the side, pull up, and he contests the shots that he's not blocking. He's altering. Uh, he's discouraging guys from going at the rim, shooting layups. I mean, it's impressive the impact he has on that side of the ball. And just think about it. He's still wet behind the ears. He doesn't even know the NBA game yet. And he's, and he's just been that impressive. It's undeniable that Victor Wembanyama is the real deal, and these former NBA players recognize it. 
With a prospect of his caliber, it would be a shame to overlook or underestimate his current and future potential greatness. Let's wish Victor and the Spurs all the best, as we look forward to enjoying some outstanding basketball for years to come.